Good morning, I'm Mark LaMancha with Humtown Additive, Humtown Products. Today, we're here with uh, two of our young adults from Crestview. It's manufacturing month, and today we're here to look at inside from their perspective with Michaela and Riker on how they see 3D printing at Humtown Products. Let's take a walk out here and look inside. But before we go on a tour, let's talk about what it is that we manufacture. At Humtown, we manufacture cores and molds out of sand for the foundry industry. But I'm sure you're wondering what are sand cores and molds, and what are foundries? Let me explain. It all starts with metal parts. Metal parts are used in just about everything in the world around us. They are used in cars, airplanes, robots, refrigerators, traffic lights, bicycles, and most likely even in the chair that you sit in. To put things in perspective, one car is made up of approximately 30,000 different parts, and most of those are made from metal. In order to make metal parts, workers have to heat up solid metal to such a high temperature that the metal melts and turns into a liquid. The people who work with the liquid metal work in what are called foundries. After the foundries are done pouring the liquid metal into the sand mold, they sit back and they let the liquid cool. As it cools, the metal turns from a liquid back into a solid. They then remove the mold and voila, we have a metal part. At Humtown, we manufacture the molds that foundries pour liquid metal into to make metal parts. And we make those molds out of sand. We use sand because sand has such a high melting point. The melting point of sand is 3,090 degrees Fahrenheit. To put that into perspective, the melting point of chocolate is around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a 3,000 degree difference. Because of sand's high melting point, when we pour that molten liquid metal into the sand molds, the sand won't melt. In addition to molds, Humtown also makes cores. You know, like an apple core. An apple core is what is on the inside of an apple. Likewise, sand cores are what go inside a sand mold. Just a little less tasty than an apple core. Okay, now that you know what it is that we manufacture, it's time to show you how we do it. I get the order from my boss, my coach. He sends it in to me, I get the email. Um, I open up the files, and then I open this program. And then I can go into the files and find the parts I need, depending on which customer it is. And this is the, uh, the Crestview projects from last year or the year last year. So then you can move them around, I can make more of them. Um, so pretty much when I have all my parts in there, I just gotta fill the box. So it's 27 inches deep. So I have to fill the whole job box. I can get as many parts in there as close together as I can without them sticking together. Because then that makes the most use of all the chemicals and stuff. So from there, when you're done, which I don't need all of those, I can make them go away. You throw them away and reprint them, so it's just waste. Yeah. Thousands and thousands. If it's a tiny little part, yeah. Yeah. A lot of pieces. Yes. Yes. So from there, then we just save it out and we put it on a flash drive. And I just drag it down and I put it on the flash drive and it copies it. And then we can take it over to the machine. So then you bring the USB over here. The plain sand up in these totes, it gets sucked up through those hoses. When it comes down into the printer, there's a mixer in the back and it adds a chemical to it that's an acid. Um, the part that's moving backwards now holds all the sand and it lays down the sand in a real thin layer. 
And then this is the print head. The print head has resin in it, and it plays the resin down where we want the part to harden. And then the chemicals react and harden. So all the white stuff is still loose sand, and the little bit of green you see is the actual part being built layer by layer on its way up. Is that held together by like acid? It's an acid and the resin, like... Like an adhesive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the chemicals react, and then they harden. So this will run for anywhere between 12 and 18 hours, and the whole job box fills up, or just half. This one's just a half. Um, and then we go in and we suck out all the loose sand and extract the hardened parts. <laughs> nope, all you do is just like a regular vacuum cleaner. Oh. Yep. <laughs> how it does it. So it builds it like 0.28 millimeters. So is every layer thickness. So it's super skinny and it just, like this was probably like 600 layers it had to run to build to get those in there. Isn't it cool? <laughs> Any questions? What if you suck the this part out? You can, like you saw how the car sucked up. Yeah, so there's really tiny pieces over there. They're like the size of a nickel. So if I don't tell them like where they are, they could all suck into the vacuum. <laughs> you have, like, the yeah, this one's, oh, I like this one. It just goes around and you gotta be careful not to poke it. Just put a big hole in it. But that's pretty much the only two we use. Yeah. <laughs> Because you can see on this one, like how these little parts they just yeah. they break real easy. How much sand do you usually use? This like, holds five thousand pounds. So we go through eight, twenty-four thousand pounds a day when we're running full. Yeah. I think we go a rail, like a railroad car. I think it's one a week now. Is that where we are? Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of sand. <laughs> so what's the next step would be they get sent to cleaning and packaging. If you want to grab one and bring it with you, that's fine. We can take it back and get them, see if I can get them clean. <laughs> we mostly Sorry. use air, but you got to be careful because the loose, loose sand can make like a tornado and it'll warm a hole into the part too. So you can't blow too hard. I'll try not to do it yet. Guy. Do you have to clean out this sand like after a day? Yeah, because it fills down in there, yep. Oops. 
because I put my finger. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, yep, I broke it. So pretty much that's what we do. But like, so we have this, this part is for a customer. So he's, it's real, you have to get all the sand out or it will be bad when they pour the metal in. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep, and it, it takes quite a bit because there's a lot in this one, yeah. So you can see it goes way down in there and yeah, like another little piece down there. Off. Yeah, so. How do you package? So packaging then, okay, so they've got to go all around the country, sometimes around the world. So you, we put them on these layers. We have all this foam. So you have to put them, these we had to turn on their sides because these little nubs would break when they bounced in the truck. Even though we had them packaged, they would bounce and they would the top layer would hit it and break it. So we have to put enough foam on here, and enough compression to smash them down without breaking them and hold them still. So that's what. As many as that one on this one. Mm -hmm. This will go to about here. Usually we don't. We stop it about here, so they don't tip over in the truck and stuff. So, but yeah, that's just what we do. How many can you fit on here? This one, I think they can get 20 on a layer, and then it's like eight, so 160 probably on the whole pallet. Do you do that for all different types of parts? Yes. Yep. Yep. How do you get that out of the box? Like uh, <laughs> sometimes that's not easy. Go ahead, No. Barry. So this one actually has hooks. So we put hooks in these holes and use the crane to pick it up. The other ones didn't. So when I put it in the build box, I left it up about that much, and we have big square metal bars so we can slide under it and then we use the crane. Picking it up that way saves people's back when people get hurt with lifting. And then, you can, then I can get in here, you know, and clean it. One of the things when I was in school was I didn't wasn't sure why I was there, and then you know one day you get out and it's like oh well let's go to work. Well nobody showed me work or nobody told me about work what work really was. So what we're trying to do is create an experience in two steps today. If this works out, is one that you understand what we do and what careers there would be, and then it might make a little more sense you know why you're doing math or or science, so that you know that the real goal in school is a career and your education and your subjects are the vehicle to help get you there. It's very important to always encourage people to try new things and, and if it doesn't work out, you know, just say to the person, what did you learn from that? Even if it costs $10,000, that's part <laughs> of your education. So it takes somebody thinking about a better tomorrow today to make that better tomorrow. how big those machines are and how much they can print. Mine's how many molds that you can fit into those machines. The ability to like create stuff and then ship it off to help other people with their products. To like help different devices and build new things. Thank you for being here. I'm really glad that you came out and, and hope that this helps you think about other things that your education could lead you into.